This is CBC Here and Now. It will be a full traditional, uh, you know, Newfoundland dinner. Uh, it will be the turkey, we have our salt meat, we have our cabbage. It's a very good feeling to know that these people have somewhere to go on Christmas because not everybody has somewhere to go. If there's a family and, you know, for whatever reason, uh, needs to have a Christmas dinner, we want them to come down and enjoy that Christmas dinner. The turkeys are stuffed, dinner tables all ready. Gift bags all filled, volunteers working steady. With all this work done, they'll now sit and wait. To serve tomorrow's Christmas dinner on hundreds of plates. Welcome to Here and Now, I'm Carolyn Stokes. And I have absolutely nothing <laughs> to rhyme with Carolyn Stokes. I'm Anthony Germain. It is the night before Christmas and tomorrow, hundreds of hot meals will be served right across the province from St. John's to Labrador City. But all that food requires a lot of helping hands. Here and Now's Malone Mullen caught up with some volunteers who want to make sure no one goes hungry this holiday season. Christmas Eve, a time for relaxation, kicking back with food, drink and family. But these volunteers are hard at work, making sure everybody gets a bit of holiday cheer. It's a huge flurry of activity today. Uh, a lot of preparation needs to be done today versus tomorrow. Uh, so tables are being set, uh, you know, our gift bags are being, uh, you know, uh, filled with fresh fruit. Here at Gower Street United Church in St. John's, a feast in the making. 16 turkeys, 200 pounds of turnips and buckets of salt beef enough to feed an entire community on Christmas Day. You know, tomorrow, uh, you know, we have a table host at every table. So, you know, it's about getting to know the people who come here and, uh, you know, really provide that togetherness and that real uh, community of Christmas because Christmas should be about spending time with people. And uh, so that's what we're really, really trying to provide here. Churches and charities in St. John's have been pulling together for this dinner for the last 18 years. But in Mount Pearl, one restaurant rose to the challenge five years ago. The Sweet Newfie Kitchen started small, just over 20 hot holiday meals for residents in need. Now they're feeding 500. All the fixings, along with stockings stuffed with gifts, hand delivered to families around town. Owner Jamie Ryan says she'll never forget helping a single mom and three kids with nothing but a bare table. My daughter was carrying a box of tangerines on the very top and one happened to fall off and uh, hit the floor. And this little boy, I don't say he was two years old, he picked up the tangerine and uh, he hugged it and he kissed it. And he had so much appreciation and gratitude in that orange that I just, I had to leave. Like I, I started to screech. All this prep means no rest for these volunteers, but they don't seem to mind. People come out of the woodwork to help out for this. So this is Christmas to me. Giving their time leads to maybe the kindest gift of all, a sense of belonging on Christmas Day. Malone Mullen, CBC News, St. John's. The friends and family of Victoria Best marched through Clarenville this weekend. It was part memorial, part demonstration and fundraiser. It's been one year since the 27-year-old took her own life after a long struggle with mental illness. The death of the young music teacher shocked the entire community. Best was known in Clarenville as a teacher as well as an advocate for mental health. The event raised $500 for Pawsology, a dog therapy program which has named its new recruit Tori in honor of Victoria Best. Organizers say they plan to make it an annual event. Well, this next story brings a new meaning to a green Christmas. A manager of a golf course on the Buren Peninsula says vandals targeted his golf green and did a lot of damage. Bill Lee of Grand Meadows Golf Course says ATVs tore up the grounds around 10 o'clock Friday night. It appears the machines gained access through the adjoining Frenchman's Cove Provincial Park and did thousands of dollars in damage. Lee says it doesn't bode well for club membership or for the workers who rely on the greens to make money. He reported the incident to the RCMP and hopes someone will come forward with information. Search and rescue crews returned to their home base in Gander on the weekend. Two Cormorant helicopters and search teams had to find a new home last month after an air quality test found asbestos dust in the hangar. The Canadian Armed Forces teamed up with the Canadian Coast Guard to find a place in St. John's. Nine-wing Gander Commander Jen Weissenborn said the dust posed a low risk to those working in the hangar, but one support contractor refused to work in the hangar, and that prompted an earlier move to St. John's. 
Weissenborn says they still aren't sure where the asbestos came from. She says they're aiming to test other buildings on the Gander base in the new year. Well, any hopes of an early season at Marble Mountain were dashed over the weekend. Operators said the hill could have opened on Boxing Day if the weather cooperated, but it didn't. The temperature reached 9 degrees in Cornerbrook on Saturday, melting most of the snow at Marble. There were also record-setting warm temperatures in Labrador on Saturday. In Churchill Falls, it was 3 degrees, and in Labrador West, 2. So there you go. Yeah, well, they can say goodbye to those warm temperatures for sure. Mm -hmm. It is cold in Labrador. I bet. Yeah, and uh, the West Coast looking at some flurries as well. Let's have a look uh, at our weather on the way headlines. Yes, we have uh, some uh, flurry, light flurry action tonight and tomorrow around two to four centimeters. Some scattered onshore flurries for the south and west coast. And as I said, some cold temperatures on the island, but especially so in Lab West. There is a, a warning of a frostbite risk there for Lab West uh, getting down to minus 37 with the wind chill tonight. So very, very cold. Now Santa Quick. better wear the good stuff yes. tonight. I, I hope he's layering up tonight mm -hmm. for sure on the Avalon tomorrow looking at a fairly nice day minus two as the high cloudy with a chance of a scattered flurry throughout the day winds fairly light as well for the rest of the province we're looking at uh, decent temperatures on the island uh, you know below zero between you know minus four minus five degrees around there central areas looking at a mix of sun and cloud some heavier flurry action on the west coast and higher winds there as well and uh, some flurry action for Nain and uh, Happy Valley Goose Bay Lab City the cold Old spot for tomorrow at minus 16 degrees. So yeah, that's a quick look. I'll get into more details a bit later. All right, of course, Carolyn, your Santa weather forecast coming up a bit later because a lot of kids, I know, be wondering how the weather is going to do for the big guy. Busy day in the city. Lots of shoppers making those last minute preparations for the holidays. Here now is Meg Roberts was also out and about and has some last minute gift tips if you're scrambling for time. Well, I'm standing at a gas station on Water Street, and this might not strike you as a spot to get Christmas gifts, but I want to see what last minute shoppers can get at a convenience store. Okay, so I'm thinking the electronic section would be good. You could maybe get a charger or some headphones. Uh, it's a nice stocking stuffer. Everyone could use a charger. Another cute gift could be a car basket, so you could put some window wiper fluid, you could put maybe an air freshener in it, some of these car products. Gift cards you can never go wrong with. Everybody loves a good gift card, and nothing says Christmas like a case of beer. If you were to buy a Christmas gift at this convenience store, what would you buy? A gas card. So practical. Everyone uses gas. Are, are, a gas card. are people coming in to buy gas cards, that sort oh, of thing? Oh, yes. They've been in all week. So people might not think that this is the greatest place to buy Chris Christmas gifts, but it just might be. Oh, sure is. <laughs> you got Grandma who might want some lotto tickets. <laughs> Never too late to win the big one. <laughs> if you had to buy a Christmas gift in this convenience store, what would you get? Definitely beer. <laughs> Your loved ones would like beer? Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> You could also give the gift of beef jerky on Christmas because who doesn't love beef jerky? To top things off, the store even carries Christmas cards. So if you're scrounging around looking for that last minute gift, you can always pop into your local convenience store. Meg Roberts, CBC News, St. John's. And procrastinators didn't have a problem at Costco today. Surprisingly, there were some empty parking spots in the St. John's lot, and that had some thinking that a last minute shopping excursion actually pays off. Actually, it's probably a good time to go shopping in there. A lot of people, but uh, not as bad as it has been in the past few days. I was down about three days ago, and it was madness. Awesome. Not too bad, not really busy. No, very good, actually. So yeah, you thinking maybe this last minute shopping might have its perks or Oh, for sure. I'm one of those uh, uh, one of those people that always has to do things at the last minute. <laughs> so it's good. What's it like in there? Not as bad as what I think it would have been a few days ago. Saving your shopping for last minute is not such a bad idea after all. 
an 11 year old in Corner Brook has become an expert at tracking Santa. Every half hour, David 80 checks in on Santa using his tracking app. He started following the jolly old elf's movements early this morning and found he had already delivered millions of gifts to children in New Zealand and Fiji. 80 estimates estimates that Santa should be landing in Corner Brook around 11 p.m. He's hoping for a GT racer and a new Lego set. I started tracking with the uh, Where's Santa app just so I could tell the amount of time he'd be here and where he is and stuff. And it's basically saying what he's doing. So last time I checked, uh, it said he was packing up the sleigh. <laughs> Lots of kids uh, watching Great. Santa tonight. 11 o'clock, Corner Brook, West yeah. Coast. So, what's that, midnight in St. John's? I guess so. Roughly. Yeah. Yeah. He's fast, though. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Well, you uh, may be spending this evening prepping for tomorrow's Christmas dinner. I know that's what I'm going to be doing mm -hmm. later. Uh, you know, stuffing the turkey, peeling the carrots, and mashing the turnip. The turnip, or is that rutabaga? Melissa Tobin with CBC Radio's Newfoundland Morning. Hit the co-op to find out how people feel about the right word. Mother, he's got some more like I What's this? Uh, but did you know it's really called a rutabaga? rutabaga? That was going to be my second guess, actually. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Did you know the real name of this is a rutabaga? Rutabaga. Yes, I did. But why do you think you call it a turnip, <laughs> not a rutabaga? Uh, because typically in Newfoundland, that's what we normally call it, a turnip. But look at the bag there, sir. It's called rutabaga on the bag. That's yeah. Somebody bagged that from Ontario. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff, but that's where there's you know what? Funny thing about it, they're marked rutabaga, right? Yeah. Even though they're marked rutabaga, I don't know what even calls it rutabaga. I think it's turnip itself. Yeah. Because it's local. Yeah. Right. So, and you got this one here. I mean, especially this time of year, that's marked rutabaga. It's from the mainland. So, I don't even know if the farmer knows. Rutabaga, they give them to the cows and horses, and come from the states and people just in Canada follow the states and call it rutabagas. But that's a turnip. So nothing would make you change your mind and call this a rutabaga? You got that right. I'm true, a pure bred Newfoundlander, but I'm down from Ontario. <laughs> but that is a turnip. I have them don't know the difference in a rutabaga and a turnip, so there you a go. A turnip always goes in my jigs dinner. <laughs> <laughs> turnip goes in everything. Do you know the difference? Uh, I'm learning the difference today, <laughs> really. A sunny, beautiful Christmas Eve in St. John's. And what better place to spend it than the Loop? Stay tuned.
Welcome back, everyone. Well, it's Christmas Eve, and it was such a beautiful day on the Avalon. Yep. And Anthony, you got to uh, go out and enjoy it a bit. Certainly did. It was a bright day. Lots of parents, lots of kids of all ages headed to the Loop in Bannerman Park in St. John's for a little pre-Christmas skate. Can't really blame them. Mm -hmm. Take a look. So tell me, why are you dressed this way? Because I can't give everybody a gift. So I just want to make people smile and laugh, you know, have something to smile about. So what do the kids think about your costume? Oh, I see people smile and laugh. It's really cute. I just want people to have something to smile about this Christmas. So why'd you come skating on the day that Santa's coming? We thought it would be fun just to come out on a beautiful day just to have some fun. Okay, now, so you've never skated? Never in my oh. whole life. Well, what are you waiting for? I'm scared. <laughs> okay, come on. We're gonna, I'm going to take you. Here we go. Here we go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just one step at a time. One step at a time. Hold me. Come on. Come on. It's easy. Okay. Come on. You can do it. I want to cry. Come on now. One step. One step. There we go. Now, keep your legs a little bit farther apart. A little bit farther apart. Oh, my God. Okay. Are you guys coming or what? You're gonna leave her out here by herself? Okay, there you go. You got the tiger helping you. So you just you just push along. There you go. There's your first. That's your first motion. <laughs> okay, uh, it, it only gets easier. It's Christmas Eve. Why are you guys out here? Well, I like. I didn't feel like it was Christmas Eve, so I wanted to start getting into the spirit, like yeah, and starting to like, yeah okay. motion. I just. He invited me out, so I, of course I said yes. And it's just really fun to go skating and to just have fun. Okay, now this is Matthew, and I noticed, Matthew, you're a very fast skater. What is the trick to skating that quickly? Uh, I don't know. Just try to stay low, keep your legs strong. Stay low and what? Keep your legs strong. Keep your legs strong. So what, what advice do you have for me? How can I skate uh, as fast as you? Push with, like, your legs. Travis Push. Cable All right, so go for a race now. Uh, okay. All right, here we go. Oh, that didn't go so well. <laughs> fast. He was fast. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see it at the end, but I sort of fell over at the end there. Almost. almost. Oh, really? But anyway, great I like your hat, too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> kind of look like moose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyways, getting into the holiday spirit now. How's this for a Christmas scene? Andreas Hararuse came home to Hopedale in style. It's a dog cool. team okay. and a couple of Christmas trees in tow. Standing upright, no less. Not one, but two trees. That, that is, is quite the scene, isn't it? It's hard to do. Yep, the two trees standing up. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not using one of those skeezies we had on last week, so that's hard. Very a lovely nice. winter scene, a classic winter scene. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, now look at the weather, and uh, Santa would be happy with the weather forecast, I would say, for tonight. A few flurries there on the west coast of the island and in northern parts of Labrador, but uh, overall looking at a decent night. We're looking at some scattered onshore flur flurries overnight tonight as well for the Avalon Peninsula. Minus six as the high, but it's going to feel cooler everywhere with that wind chill for sure. Wind's fairly light here uh, in in the east, so it's going to be a quite a calm, nice evening with the possibility of a dusting of snow. For the west coast, though, those flurries are going to be a bit more intense, about two centimeters expected to accumulate overnight tonight. Uh, and the wind's a little bit higher as well. They're get going into tomorrow. Now, Labrador City is really the cool spot overnight tonight, minus 37 uh, with that wind chill. Maine is probably the messiest area overnight tonight, two to four centimeters there, and it's pretty windy.
windy as well, and those winds are going to stay fairly strong for northern parts of Labrador tomorrow. So here we are tomorrow, Tuesday morning, Christmas Day, and we have some snow on the west coast, but not a huge amount, about two centimeters there. And for the Avalon, looking at some onshore flurries uh, throughout the day and some flurries in Happy Valley Goose Bay and continuing there in the Nain area. A closer look at the Avalon Peninsula. You can see how those flurries will be pushing through throughout the day. So we'll see a bit of flurry action and then it'll end and it'll, then it'll be back. But overall, it's looking like quite a nice day. The winds are going to be light. So uh, I'm thinking it's going to feel Christmassy that way. Uh, so here we are. Temperatures minus two as the high tomorrow. Winds staying fairly light. Temperatures not too too cold on the island. M minus four for central areas. A mix of sun and cloud there. Shouldn't see much by way of flurries uh, in central. But for the west coast, continuing with those flurries uh, tomorrow, about two to four centimeters. And higher winds, particularly in the rec house area, could gust up to 70 there. For the straits, temperatures are cooling down as we head into Labrador. Labrador st City staying very cold tomorrow. Minus 16 with uh, minus 27 wind chill and some more uh, snow for Nain, two centimeters there, and it's going to be uh, very windy there as well. So Wednesday uh, into Thursday, things clear off. You can see quite nicely. Uh, there's a chance of some scattered flurries for the West Coast, Cornerbrook area, but elsewhere looking pretty bright and sunny. Nain could see some more flurries as well as Cartwright on, Thursday, on Wednesday and Wednesday night. Heading into Thursday, you can see a bit more snow moving in, particularly for the island. Uh, we're looking at some flurry action for the Avalon Peninsula and Marystown and some sunshine for central areas. And Lab City, you can see those temperatures staying very chilly there, minus 19 as the high for Lab City. And cool right across Labrador, actually, on Thursday. And that's your forecast. And here we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's probably the brightest spot in all of the Goulds uh, this time of year. And while many deck out their home for the holidays, one man has been going over the top for more than 40 years, all because of his mom. Wow, mm -hmm. nice. Here and now is Jeremy Eaton explains. It's a display of lights that would bring a smile to Clark Griswold's face all along the fence, into the backyard, and right up onto the roof. Mon Noel, I love Mon Noel on the roof. That's one thing I like. How hard is that to get up on the seat on the roof of your house here? Not bad. All the much one more person to give me a hand and pass it up to me. <laughs> Doug O'Reilly has been creating this Christmas scene and its festive glow for more than 40 years. It takes a lot of work to hang the lights, put up all the decorations, and make sure that Santa is tied down on windy days. I usually start in November, and I have to have it finished before the 13th of December when I put them all on. O'Reilly's wife Betty does the inside decorating and his granddaughter Natasha helps when she's home. But other than that, he is a one-man army, carrying on a tradition his mother started. Something we always done over the years. My mother always loved Christmas lights and I stayed at it. And I kept adding on after that. It adds a little more traffic into the ghouls as passerbyers want to get a look at the man with all the lights. All he cares about is illuminating smiles on the faces of children. Everybody comes to see it and they like to see it and all the feedback we get back from the everybody talking about it, so we just do it, keep it going for everybody. O'Reilly says he has no intentions to stop creating this display in his yard. And when I asked him what he thought his mother might think of what is here today, he said she's definitely looking down. And I joked, based on all the lights that he got here, she almost certainly could see it from heaven. Jeremy Eaton, CBC News, The Ghouls, St. John's. Here's a look at your oh. viewer photo of the day. Isn't a, that lovely? And a Carolyn Stokes Christmas gift, the answer. <laughs> Right there in front there of go. us in the banner. Oh, well, we know that this was taken in Roddington. Roddington. Uh, beautiful shot on Tibbs Eve. Thank you very much, Tra Travis Gillard, for sending that in. It's That's a nice one. Photo. Great one.
national celebration. Join host Jerry D live from Niagara Falls for a night of fireworks and fun with music from across the country and with a local midnight countdown. Everyone can celebrate Canada's New Year's Eve countdown to 2019 on CBC. Does it yes, but first, but first, I have a little something for you because it matches your gingery colors. <laughs> gingery colors. And, and because Twitter has blown up with my uh, skating hat, uh, which is always a popular thing with the kids. Oh, uh, yes. You look like so a So now a we're ready dog for winter, with... right? <laughs> Ralph from the Muppets, yes. That's what you look but like. you could actually play the piano, I think. <laughs> anyway, listen, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And too. I know you're actually going to still be here after Christmas. You're here yes. on Thursday. That's right. And uh, I want to say Merry Christmas, and Merry I look forward Christmas to working to with you in 2019 oh, as well. Likewise. Right. Yeah, so. Special uh, program. Yeah, because this is a half hour show right now, so we're going to move on. Uh, coming up, two uh, special back to back episodes of Land and Sea, starting with Once Upon a Christmas Time. Mm -hmm. And at 7 o'clock, another Land and Sea classic, The Mummers. So uh, get set to grab your purity syrup, your box of jam jams for mm -hmm. the next hour. It's all about Christmas on the East Coast. Yeah, and a bit of fruitcake, maybe. Mm hmm. Lovely. Should be good. Mm -hmm. Are you doing, all the, you're doing all the peeling tonight, you said? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. All the peeling tonight. Callus is already. Callus is already. <laughs> I will see you in uh, 2019. Good night, everyone, and Merry Christmas.